Alright, welcome back to Comic Book Wednesdays. We're continuing our weekly series where we talk about comic books. We're your hosts. I'm Ian. I'm Al. And I'm Shane. Right, and Shane, why don't you tell us about what book we're reading as we are on one of your picks. Yeah, we are doing Soul of the Dragon, a Power Rangers graphic novel. Uh, kind of focuses on Tommy and Kat's life after the main series, so them you know, being adults and dealing with adult problems and uh, having a kid who's trying to join the police force and uh, yeah, the lovely parental issues that come with that. It's a fascinating read so far, but before I jump into how I feel about the book, I want to talk a little bit about the author, Kyle Higgins. Um, I'm familiar with his work because he actually worked on the Nightwing book that kicked off in the New 52. Um, so he actually wrote part of the Night of the Owls, because um, that. Oh, shit! I didn't know that. So fascinating tie back to the last book. Um, also, he did a Batman Beyond book that I think I read. I read a couple Batman Beyond books for a little there, um, and if it's the one I'm thinking, it was pretty good. It felt really in line with the show, and I really enjoyed it. So um, I like Kyle Higgins' work. I'm excited to read more of this. But yeah, the book so far is so great. Shane, I'm, I think it's fascinating. I love the world of the Power Rangers. Getting more of that is always good. Never thought I'd see Red Hood in person. So, I'm not very versed in Power Rangers since, you know, I only really watched it when I was a kid. Sure. Um, who is Cat? So, Kim was the pink ranger right you remember yes. back in the day yes. so yes. at one point in the show uh kim's character left okay. you know she passed her like morpher down to this australian woman named cat Catherine, and she took over as being the pink ranger gotcha, gotcha. that was like basically real early it was like season two or three right uh, it, it happened a little bit, a little bit in there. Like her and Jason ended up leaving to go to like a uh, quote unquote peace conference thing, and they like they wanted to continue their lives and not be Rangers anymore, and so they transferred over um, their power to a couple of new people. Um, which in the comics they eventually explained that like you know they went on a secret mission off world, but in the show it was like a hey we want to stop this, we want to actually be high schoolers and enjoy our lives. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. The, the latest Netflix adaptation had Cat in it, if I remember correctly. Yeah, oh, the super cheesy one. I didn't know that was even out. I haven't watched that yet. It's... It's very cheesy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. Well, I mean, the original one was really cheesy. For what they promised that they wanted to do, because, like, they had marketed this as, like, you know, going to be more of an, like, a, a adult type thing, and, you know, with continuing more of those, like, themes, and I was like, I was excited for it in the beginning. But, like, watching it, it's like, oh, you just made a futuristic Power Rangers episode, so that's all you did. Yeah, they didn't. I was hoping it would be more adult, but it just wasn't. That That's said, a shame. I think the comic books will scratch that itch. I can promise it will. Yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> I enjoyed the first um, thirty pages that we read, and it was a very easy read. Like, it, yeah. I found myself on page thirty-one, and I was like, "Hi, huh, I better check what page I'm on." <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> it goes by really quick, and um, I think that's mostly because a standard comic book issue was about 24 to 28 pages. So when you said 30, I was like, hmm, that might be a little short. Um, but if that's what you want, how you want to take it, that's how we'll take it. No problem. Yeah, I kind of found that, like, breaking it up into sections of 30, because, like, we ended, just to skip ahead for some bits, because I took some notes, 
Um, we ended right where he's talking to this character named Sky, and he's like, okay, where, where the fuck is my kid? And yeah. And Sky's, Sky's Sky looking at him Sky. like, you know, like he doesn't want to tell him. Right, so Sky works for SPD, right? Which is their police yes. force? Yeah. And just to kind of update, so Tommy is current. he was a doctor, t doctorate teacher, and he's retiring? Yes, he was a um, he had a doctorate in archaeology and history, and he was just he was teaching high school, and he was doing some like professor work. Um, that's just knowledge I know from reading other comics. But yeah, he was a doctor, um, fully retired from being a Power Ranger, just teaching and living out his life, and he's decided to retire. Okay, that's pretty cool. So, some of the like notes that I took were very much the slice of life that I thought was really funny about this because I mean you think Power Rangers, and you know it's like oh action fighting and it's like no nah, here's this here's this dude who's like been doing this his entire life, he's got back problems he's got other issues because he's been doing this for so fucking long. And I just, I, I always, I just thought it was fascinating when I started reading it because I had always wondered, like, what happens to these people when that stops? Like, there's a lot of uh, stories out there that are like, oh, maybe that like they died fighting and things like that. And like, he even lies to his doctor when his doctor's like, well, yeah, it's no wonder you're in pain. You have this like fracture and these issues, and you said you were in a car accident years ago, and it like cuts to him fighting a monster, and he's like, yeah, it was a car accident. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty good. Beautiful splash page when that cut to him fighting the monster, by the way. I thought that was really great. The art in this is really nice. It, even in that like page, it almost looked like a glad uh, like a gladiator ring because I see a lot of like things in the background that like I would see in like Marvel stuff where it looks like it's an audience. It could have been. I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised, you know. I mean, space gladiatorial ring, and he had to fight in it. And we do know that being a teacher doesn't pay enough money. This is true. <laughs> be a Power Ranger, space gladiator, gladiator by night. No, I I really do like this slice of life. I always like that in like any type of media, honestly, you can like get that breathing moment. Um, it's nice to decompress with that kind of stuff. Now I, I'm extremely curious to where this is going, because we got a nice little mystery being set up. Where is the son? Why is he lying to Tommy? Um, you know, like... I have the feeling that like maybe there's going to be a change of mantle here. That'd be kind of cool, like passing down the, uh, the coin. I don't know how that works in war, but that would be neat. Um, I always like legacy projects, and this is what that feels like. Yeah, no, I definitely get that vibe too. And like, I, I know that um, the, in that last in that last panel, like right before that, when his friend gets in the car, and like, you know. It, Tommy's initial reaction is he calls his wife and he's like, "Hey, have you heard from our son? Like, what's going on?" And it's like he's actually just acting like a parent in that in that instance, which oh, I yeah. thought was really cool because he's just handling it how anybody else would handle it. And I like them bringing that more like humanistic approach to some of these characters because I feel like that's not done often enough, especially when you get like you know the Power Rangers as legendary as they are, like being this whole fantastical superhero team. And it's like, you know, the human connection is often missed. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. That's, I can see that easily being missed, but not only just because of who they are as characters, but it's not being written for an audience that looks for that, typically. Mm-hmm. So, when you have... Um, like a comic book medium that is really aimed at an adult teen audience they look for deeper things in their writing and that's when the author can explore these 
um, more grounded, concrete ideas that make the reader think more and look into it. Um, so that's again, it's like why I'm appreciating this a little bit more. It's because I know what I want from Power Rangers as far as now being my age. Like, I'd love to look back at it and say, like, okay, yeah. I see as the show that I watched as a kid is still entertaining in its goofy way, but, like, I'm not getting anything deep or substantial out of it. But this scratches that, like I was saying. Yeah. Now, what do you think of it so far? Um, I thought it's good. I, I like I said, I, I don't have much experience in in Power Rangers since I haven't watched it since I was a real young kid. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoyed this the first part of it, and I'm excited to see what happens. But I just wish I had more understanding of the story around what's going on. Well, I can fill you in a little bit if you'd like. Yeah. So, what this, you know, in, it, it pulls from a couple of different sources, and this will eventually explain it, but I'll, I'll try and stick to stuff that won't be explained in the book. Okay. So that I'm not spoiling anything, and this is just background knowledge. Um, after the main, after, you know, Tommy and all them stop being Power Rangers, you have this group called SPD. It stands for Space Patrol Delta. They're basically just cops. And, you know, they're trying to get set up, trying to do, you know, interplanetary travel. They're trying to set up relations with, like, other planets and things. So you saw that, you know, his son's friend was looks like an alien. And yeah. everyone's just not even phased by it. And that's the reason why, is because they're trying to set up, like, different things with these different worlds and things like that. So, like, I don't even remember them ever, like going past it just being on Earth and these are the Power Rangers, like... Because it didn't when you watched it. Yeah. Like, I didn't... I have only ever seen the original series. Mm -hmm. So, like, this whole, like... More than just Rita and Goldar and... Those original characters is, like... This whole thing's new. <laughs> That's you completely what, fair. You know what makes me think? Eventually, we hmm. should read um, Boom's initial Power Rangers comic line. That's it's why I downloaded the first one for you guys. <laughs> can can we eventually do that as a group? Because I feel like that would be cool. Yeah, absolutely, and that'll definitely. Yeah, I would definitely read questions. like more through the outer stories of it. So like. Boom has a couple different lines, and I think their first one focuses a lot on the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which eventually goes into the Shattered Grid, and you get to see more things and all that kind of stuff, so shame would be better to explain it, but we can always get to that at another point. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, just basically, just basic some background knowledge, like, the, one of the, this actually ties into one of the screenshots I took, so he's sitting in this car talking to Kat and, he, and they're talking about gang wars and they're talking about all these other things like that is completely a comic thing that's never been referenced before that's just establishing the world of the comic and so when he talks about like you know look at all the good that we did and how it like doesn't we didn't really make that much of a difference and Kat's like no we saved the world a bunch of times like you know come on think of be a little bit more positive in what she's talking about is just relation to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. All of the times that they stopped Goldar, they stopped Rita, and they stopped Zed, that's what she's referencing. All of gotcha. this stuff is new to them, too, as it would be new to the reader. Right. I did like the, uh, the little note I wanted to put out there was the, uh, the picture of the original Rangers on his desk. I thought that was a, a nice note to us old heads that might not know everything that's going on. Absolutely. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, also, to make you feel better, Al, I've never watched anything past the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Just okay. okay. So you know. So well, there's like, there's like 15 of them, isn't there? Some of them are on different realities. You know, some of them are on Earth. Um, 
up to so like I'm pretty sure there was a point where like it was a continuous story like um, Tommy changed a couple times like he was yes. the red Zeo Ranger right yeah so I, I can explain that a little bit because this book is going to touch on that and I don't know if it does a good job so I'll just do a, a brief thing about that he started off as the Green Ranger we all we all know that Yep. When he lost his powers as the Green Ranger, Zordon ended up creating, with the help of Billy and some other like, magical nonsense, he became the White Ranger. Which the comic did reference that. Yes. There is a... Once the Mighty Morphin powers are gone, what Ian had mentioned... The entire team gets new powers, and it's based off of this, like, crystalline magic, which is what they call the Zeo Rangers. You'll you'll see that as well in this. The last one that Tommy gets is well after, you know, he starts teaching, he leaves that Power Ranger world behind. They find um, meteor fragments imbu imbued with energy, and that's the Dino Thunder powers, which is another one of his suits, which is a black suit. This happens well into the future, and he's not even supposed to be a Power Ranger, but one of these things basically just falls into his lap, and he's like, well, I'm not going to say no to the chance to help people again. And he becomes a Power Ranger once more. Right. After that is when he's kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm done, done. You guys can leave me the fuck alone now. Let me, let me live my life in peace. And... It will explain it a little bit how he's able to access some of these different things. Um, so the comic universe is kind of establishing if you gain more than one power, you can transfer that to someone else if you choose. Okay. Which is how, like, you know, it, Kim, who was the Pink Ranger, passed it on to Catherine. Right. Does that make more sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I hate when you do that. All right. Um, that's a lot of lore, a lot of background. Um, I'm excited to get on to some of the next stuff here. I honestly, it took all my willpower not to just read this thing. I know, dude. I was, <laughs> I almost read the whole book last night. I. You know, Al, when you said page 31, that is exactly what happened to me. I was at 31, and I was like, oh, I should check where I'm at. Oh, there it is. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. I was like, oh, man, 31, I can keep going. It's <laughs> It won't be that bad. Well, you know me, Shane. I've been dying to get my hands in some Power Ranger comics for a while. We, we've been talking about it. <laughs> so, like, now that we're doing it, I'm like, this is great. This is fantastic. That's that is like. absolutely one of the reasons I love Boom Studios is because the writing is just that smooth for all of their projects. Uh huh. Bo Boom is fantastic. Great comic book company. I think um, this is the first comp or the first book I've actually read by Boom. So. I think they have a Godzilla book too, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, they have Godzilla, Ninja Turtles. They even do um, Magic: The Gathering ones, which surprise, surprise, I have bought. Sure you have. No. Is the, the <laughs> last is the last Ronin also a um a boom? Uh, it's on my shelf. I think it's. I, I want to say IDW, but let me check. I have it, it right is, here. It's IDW. You're absolutely correct. Yep. IDW. The only reason I know that is because IDW are the ones that does the Transformers ones that I like. So when I picked up the last Ronin, I was like, oh, this is going to be good. Yeah. Um, Alex, we'll read the last Ronin as as. A Group eventually. That book is fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's supposed it to be is. really good. Yeah. Um. Well, I think I really kind of would like to read the uh, the Ghostbusters ones you have in there, but I just haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, we'll circle to them. I know we will. They look. They seem like they'd be really cool. Um, well, I think we're kind of rambling at this point, so <laughs> let's uh, let's wrap it up here. Um, we got next week. We're gonna continue Soul of the Dragon. Um, we're gonna read through page sixty. 
Um, I'm sure I'm going to be itching to read the rest of it as soon as I'm done reading that much too. I can only see it getting better from here, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. I'm looking forward to continuing that with y'all. Uh, well, thanks for the pick, Shane. Well, uh, yeah, it was thanks. definitely a good one. Yep. This, thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, if you're having fun with us, comment, like, subscribe, interact with us. We're happy to talk with y'all. Um, Absolutely. Again, I'm Ian. I'm Al. I'm Al. And I'm Shane. This was Comic Book Wednesdays. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.